priming, a state of alert. In nature, plants are attacked by numerous organisms ranging from bacterial and fungal pathogens to macroscopic herbivores. How do plants defend against this vast array? Similar to humans, plants have evolved several layers of defence, which can be broadly classified into two categories. Constitutive measures, which are present before the attack, like trichomes shown here, as well as inducible ones, like nicotine. Its production is triggered by the presence of a pest. Apart from these direct defences, plants can also call up natural enemies of their pests by emitting volatile signals. Such volatile compounds are specifically emitted when plants are attacked by pests and will attract predators and parasitoids decimating the pest organism. Not all organisms that interact with plants, however, are detrimental. Plant roots, in particular, are associated with a large number of beneficial microbes. Similar to the microbiome of the human gut, these microbes surrounding the plant root have a strong impact on plant defence. Dr. Ainoa Martinez Medina from the IDIV in Leipzig, Germany, is trying to elucidate these fascinating connections between the plant root microbiome and plant defence. Her research is focused on understanding how beneficial microbes associated with plant roots can help plants to defend against pathogens and pests to improve their use in sustainable agriculture. She is studying microbes like Trichoderma hartzianum, coloured orange, or arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, coloured red. How do these microbes interact with plants and how do they improve plant defence? Plants colonised by trichoderma or arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi enter a status of defence alert, marked here in blue, and become more resistant against pathogens and herbivores that attack the root or the shoot of the plant. This phenomenon is known as defence priming. Because of this state of alert, primed plants will better ward off pests, like these caterpillars. In summary, Primed plants will set off a faster and stronger defence reaction against a given herbivore than plants without priming. At the same time, defence priming does not consume much of a plant's resources. Differing from the precautionary production of defence compounds, continuous defence, defence priming does not result in large changes of plant metabolism as long as plants are not actually attacked. Primed plants, therefore, do not incur metabolic expenses, which would eventually translate into reduced growth. This particular feature makes defence priming attractive for sustainable crop protection because the opportunity exists to improve plant defence mechanisms with little costs in terms of yield. Despite its promising potential, many aspects of the mechanisms underlying defence priming remain unresolved. The work of Dr Ainoa Martinez Medina at IDIV is focused on deciphering the major molecular and chemical components behind this state of alert. I'm trying to understand what are the main molecular and chemical mechanisms underlying this phenomenon. And for that, I'm using different approaches and different techniques, for example, transcriptomic or metabolomics, in order to understand or to have a better picture of this uh, molecular mechanism of this phenomenon. Because only if we really understand the mechanism, we can make use of this uh, microorganism in an efficient way in, a, in agricultural strategies. And only if we know how they work and what are these mechanisms, we can do realistic prediction on how these uh, microorganisms they are going to behave or how they are going to work when we release them in uh, agricultural fields.